All right, and welcome everybody on Twitch chat here, and also later on on YouTube if you're watching the recording there. We have some more Esper Angels. This is, uh, you know, one of my favorite decks to play right now, and I'm going to be doing something a little different in this video with Esper Angels. We're going to have Hawkeye playing. Right, Hawkeye? Okay, maybe not. Actually, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be trying the ranked queues uh, for the first time. So we'll be bronze level trying to level up here. So we're going to be playing for a couple hours. We're going to be playing about two hours or so in uh, maybe a little more. Uh, we'll see in the uh, ranked queues and uh, see how many matches we get done and, and how far we go there. Um, so uh, talking about the deck a little bit. So the big change that we made for, since the last time we played it uh, a couple days ago is I'm going to try to call the Honor Guards in the main deck instead of the Tithe Takers um, because of how good Honor Guard is against Soul Tie and Esper Midrange, a couple of the biggest um, decks in the format. And then the other thing is, uh, last time we played it, we had three Angel of Grace, three Lyra, and I'm put, uh, taking out two of the Angel of Graces to get the two Immortal Suns from the sideboard into the main deck because it's kind of good against... Um, a lot of the decks. It's not good against the aggro decks, but we're already kind of good against the aggro decks with the help of our angels um, in general. So I wanted some more help against uh, the mid-range and control decks of going long. Um, yeah, so I wanted against Esper Control and Sultai mid-range. And I think those are like, you know, big parts of the metagame. So I want that there. And so because we get to move the Immortal Suns into the main deck, then I got room for a fourth Thief of Sanity because um, that's just a, an awesome sideboard card. Um, and we got a couple of Disdainful Strokes to counter, like Frilled Mystic and uh, things like that. So kind of talking about our, our sideboard a little bit. Duress and Negate are for, you know, control decks, because, you know, spell-heavy control decks. I, I honestly don't mind them too much, especially Negate. I like Negate more against uh, Mono Red, also with if they're, like, really burn-heavy uh, Mono Red. Um... And uh, then we also have, like, Disdainful Stroke is, you know, that's coming in against decks with, like, Haymakers, things with, like, uh, Wrath Effects or other Angel decks or, um, you know, decks with, like, Teferi, you know, decks with a lot of four, five, six mana cost cards that we want to counter there. Spyglass is, is for Vraska and Teferi. That's exactly, like, Spyglass only comes in, basically only comes in there. I'm bringing it in against, like, Turbo Fog for Escanta or something like that also, even if they don't have um, Teferi. But that's that's what Spyglass is doing. Cry of the Carnarium is for, like, a Danto Vanguard decks. Um, Mono Blue. It's maybe my least favorite card in the sideboard, uh, but that's what that's what it does there. I like it against Mono Red with a lot of creatures that die to Cry of the Carnarium. If they're playing a lot of small creatures, it's coming in there. So, you know, small creature decks. Um... Thief of Sanity is uh, <laughs> um, cool. Rage, you got a deck for Wednesday? Nice. Yeah, Thief of Sanity is for Nexus Reclamation decks. Absolutely. Uh, control decks, any kind of any kind of control deck, Thief of Sanity comes in. And actually, I think I'm going to be bringing in Thief of Sanity against Golgari. I think I'm, I'm going to want it there um, also, just to kind of be a threat that they have to kill. Uh, that kind of takes over. I'm going to try bringing in Thieves against Golgari and see how that works out, I think. Um, and then uh, Unward Ego is basically just for Nexus of Fate decks um, and Teferi decks. So, like, Esper Control, I'm naming, I'm bringing it in, naming Teferi. You know, Nexus of Fate decks, I'm either naming Nexus or, or uh, Teferi, depending. If they're like a Niv Mizzet control deck, you can take Niv Mizzets with this card. That's that's certainly good. I wouldn't bring it in against like Is It Drakes. Uh, if they're Is It Phoenix, bring it in against Arclight Phoenix. Absolutely. And uh, like one of my friends was saying that they've been bringing it in against Soul Tide just to name um, to name Crasis, to name Hydroid Crasis, and they've actually really liked like the one copy to take all the Hydroid Crasis out of the deck, and they've had some success with that. So they can't just keep Crasising. So maybe we should try that also. Um, and then Kaya's Wrath is for Golgari or other creature-based decks. Okay, uh, so that that's the sideboard. Uh, you know, someone's asking to explain all, all those cards. Um, so 
so yeah, I've had some other people say they don't like Resplendent and Angel as much as well. But I've had just so much success with this card. The thing about Resplendent Angel is you really have to prioritize it and not play it early. You don't want to play it as a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three. You, you really want to save this card as much as possible because you want it to be your last thing. Because Resplendent Angel is, is awesome at the end, like at, in the really late game when you have the mana to use the ability. Uh, so you, you don't want to be playing, you really don't want to play this card early. You want to like play your other things, have like your other things trade and everything, and, and you can kind of have Resplendent Angel be your last card. Um, yeah, so you, so it's, it's that kind of card, but I've had a lot of success with this of turning games around and winning games that I wouldn't be able to win with other cards because of the, the ability and the lifelink and everything. All right. And Steve Supremo figured out how to s sign up with the Twitch prime. Got the Twitch prime sub here. Thanks Steve Supremo. Thank you so much. Just set up the Twitch account coming, came over from YouTube. So there we go. Awesome. And U.S. Mint as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the game yesterday, yeah, if you love defense, it was it was something else. Um, yeah, this, the Angels decks are really good against aggro for sure. All right, it's still saying that we're 70 subs away from our next emo goal, so I guess we're still 70. So I guess that number's not moving. Um, but let's get a pack. Uh, let's see, our last one was M19, so we're at Dominaria now. Yeah. So we're getting packed, we're getting to our next sub goal. Territorial Allosaurus. We just got that one. We got that one earlier. Two of those today. They're getting a lot of like the same pa same ones here. Oh, wait, cancel. Never mind, we're doing ranked. Alright, how do I do ranked? Uh, find a match. Ranked? Is this what I do? Traditional ranked? I guess that's what I do. Consume has also been good for me as well. You should try it sometime. Not necessarily now, but it's been a great feeling when my opponent taps out for a big crisis and I kill their biggest creature and gain a bunch of life while triggering resplendent angel um yeah i i, I did have like so i did play that's a good point like triggering resplendent angel is really nice with it i did play consume with the mardu control deck that we had uh from ray day pinball who donated and i was i was impressed with consume as a card i did like it uh, we did play against like two or three different carnage tyrant decks though so it really helped out there with that um, but it seems pretty expensive like my curve's already pretty high with a lot of 4 and 5 mana stuff and I don't really want another 4 mana removal spell you know I know you can have it be a 2 mana cycler cycling card but that's not usually worth a card even yeah I, d I don't know But yeah, retract. Yep, you got it. That's exactly what you want. You wanted after Lyra for sure. All right, our very first ranked match ever. Our hand's horrible. I know, Hawkeye. Isn't that so bad? Look at that hand. Um, twenty-six land deck on the draw. Hmm. I'm gonna mulligan. All right, I like that more. All right, Mike. Here we go. The old drowned catacomb planes opener. So I hope they're Esper mid range and not Esper control. I guess we drew a swamp. I could have thought erasured. No, I just want to get on a guard and play. Thought Erasure is just so good. It's such a good card. It's like the it's the reason to be playing Esper for us. Uh oh. They seem like they may be control. And now I wish I would have Thought Erasured. I guess I already had like my turn two plan kind of planned out, and that could cost me.
I didn't play the Thought Erasure into the Counterspell mad mana last turn. Because my plan was to play it on turn four, but then we drew land. I like playing on turn four more because, like, even if we didn't have the land, because of uh, making them have to choose from countering or chemister's insight. Uh, like, making them choose there. So, Lyra, Lyra, Honor Guard, Mortify are probably the worst three cards in our deck. Uh, you know, these are, like, Honor Guard and Lyra are cards I'm going to be sideboarding out. So, this hand is... Not a good six card hand here in this match. Hmm. They're shocking in there. They certainly have another counter spell. If we draw a land, we can Thought Erasure and Seraph of the Scales. Having Takali Honor Guard in our deck instead of Tithe Taker, this is the big problem, is this matchup. Tithe Taker is miles and miles better in this matchup, and this is already a matchup that's not necessarily great for us. Settle cast down moment. Can I play around Settle? I kind of want to take the cast down. Hey, Matthew Ori, gifting out five subs. Swamp Thoughtseize, uh, Dace, Chapin, Anath Man, and Fatal Sensation. Nice. Fatal getting the sub. Heck yeah. All right. Uh, can I play around Settle? Well now, if, if I would if I would have known I had the dive down, then I would have wanted to take the cast down. But of course, I would have had to wait to draw it. See, the thing is, Seraph of the Scales matches up pretty well against Chromium for us because of the Death Touch. So I like that that quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely, Matthew. All right, so 66 out of 70 and down to 65. And we're getting a pack. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll do that after Wizard. All right, so we get to kill Chromium. So that's that's certainly really important for us. Well, maybe we get to kill Chromium. Because if they have two counter spells. Syncopate? I couldn't like on see that's a that's the kind of thing that I can't just untap for though.
Because if I, I can't just be like, oh, I can untap it and be able to pay for syncopate. But I, I can't do that because I need the, the damage on the chromium. The Schmidt. Get that two month streak. Yeah, yeah. You already probably got that anniversary, but um, that's why we have so many subs today is because today they reset uh, how the anniversaries really work um, on there. And so they're getting just all the sub notifications today now for it. Okay, so change the deck up. Negate, Duress, Disdainful Stroke, Thief of Sanity, Ego, Spyglass. That's the thing, like, Tithe Taker is great in this matchup, and so not being able to keep, like, not having Tithe Taker in the deck certainly hurts us here. So yeah, I'll, I don't like that we don't have Tithe Taker. So, so not sold honor guards worth it, but we'll we'll see if we have enough after sideboarding. We still have a whole lot, but I only have what three creatures now. So just like three cre yeah. So just have three creatures, just relying on those three: Resplendent, Seraph, and Thief. I could play I can play Angel of Grace over this Mortify. Thing is, they usually have like their own Thief of Sanities though, that they bring in. Yep, 144 subs away from another 12-hour stream. YouTube subs. Uh, this hand is not good. Let's just keep this. Oh, I have dive downs still in the deck. I forgot. I missed the dive downs. I, I wanted to take those out. Well, I mean, they're not, they're not bad. They're, they're not bad. I can have dive down in. <laughs> Naming absorb. Insight to fairy mortify. Take the Mortify. So should that have Contempt for the Teferi? Yeah, we've had two good draws there with the Duress Negate. Kind of wanted to just negate the, the Insight, honestly. I got to start the uploading of start the uploading of Rakdos Menagerie. Keep up the pace. Oh, and, and up, update the decklist command, too. I didn't update the decklist command. I gotta do that. Alright, I'm doing that currently.
Sorry, Hawkeye. Organic chicken. No, I think we we'd want uh, Spyglass name into fairy. Getting in on that hype. Thanks for getting a chicken. Really hope they don't have a wrap. Sixty-eight and sixty-four. Um, I'm not sure how important Scotty Honor Guard is for Esper Angels. I'm not sure if I like it or not. This is not a good matchup for it. Like this is a horrible matchup for it. Like this is this is just the actual worst matchup for it. Um. Yeah, it's, some, it's something I'm trying out here. I could be convinced not to play it. Yeah, I've always played Tights Taker in the deck. This is, It's new that I'm trying this now. So we saw Settle last game. It's just a great card. Now they get to Insight. I'm honestly not sure if we can win this matchup without having the Tithe Takers, honestly. It's it's a huge blow of not of like just taking a threat out of the deck and especially a two mana threat. So yeah, if yeah, Tithe Taker is a good option to to for that slot. Um, if you, yeah, if you don't want to craft the Honor Guards, uh, a Danto Vanguard is another option there. At least our Immortal Sun's not getting countered. That's good. We need this Immortal Sun to resolve, to have a chance. All right, the I'm auto tap didn't leave two blue up. Timing. That's also good news. We need to move quickly. We really got to draw our, our land this turn. We can't let them have to ferry for a while. I mean, I guess I have a contempt for it, but still. Okay, just stop. S stop. Stop. Yeah, he's one to play. Yeah, Golgari and Esper mid-range, Honor Guard is, is great against those decks. Um, and those are, you know, two really popular decks. The, the thing is, is Esper, mid, Esper Control is also really popular, and Honor Guard is just... It's just such a bad card. Let's slow this down. Let's skip to the good part. Bite the pen, don't bite me. Hmm. 
Please don't find the counter spell. Don't find it, don't find it. Yeah, Knight of Grace is perfectly fine. Okay, it's in there. It's in there. Search for Scant is a problem. So they did have Settle. Or like, they may have had Settle before. Hmm. I kind of want to keep this Immortal Sun on top, so even if they draw something to deal with this one, we can have another one. Are they going to have, like, a Cleansing Nova, though, in their deck? Mortify doesn't do anything. Like, they need, like, Cleansing Nova. That's probably their only disenchant, is what I would assume. No, I'll, I'll get rid of it. Yeah, we're in, we're in game two, so. All right, y'all were saying keep. The the big thing that, that I, I'm kind of worried about is this Escanta, though. Like, you know, us keeping it there, the Escanta can, can bury us. And so I think that's the big thing that I'm worried about. And I'll just wait with Thought Erasure. We don't need to cast it right now. We'll have that, you know, like they're going to find counter magic. Yeah, Mortify doesn't matter. Mortify... Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Because Mortify says enchantment or creature. And this is an artifact. So that should eat the negate. What do you want? We're just going to bury us. I am countering this precognitive perception. I think that's I think that's too many cards. Spyglass can name lands. Yes. Yes, if we find Spyglass, we can shut off Ascanta. That's that's certainly what we want to do. Um, yeah, I'll counter that. I think having Seraph in play is probably pretty important. I was, I was kind of planning on waiting till next turn for the Duress to take the Settle. Gosh. Just only have counter magic. All right, well, we get to take Perception. This is actually going to be a good Duress for us. This Perception... Draw three. You gotta get get rid of that thing. We're down to twenty cards. Can we deck them? They probably have like the one chromium as like the only thing, the only card that does anything like to kill us. So we just have to deal with one chromium. Likely.
Oh yeah, we, we could not win this without the Immortal Sun. Alright, I'm I'm gonna just Yeah, if I if I activate Archer Verasco and even find anything to, to play here, uh they'll have like their syncopate up. So I'll just play the Godless Shrine and pass and just draw a card on end stuff. Day was good today. Yeah, I've had a had a good day. Um Yeah, and we're we're trying some ranks for the first time, but we got our toughest matchup here. They're all about these syncopates. So us getting another land from their settle certainly good. Best of three, of course. Yeah, there's they're sideboarding in best of three. Stop. Crap. They did have a cleansing nova. That's probably game. Hold that thought. That's probably game. Guess I need to keep that that immortal sun earlier, but I don't know how I'm really resolving another immortal sun here. You know, like I I can't resolve one. Anyway. Now, Teferi means they can't deck themselves, but all they gotta do is find Chromium. So yeah, they can't deck themselves. All right, so one match in. One match in, and I hate having Tikali Honor Guard over Tithe Taker. I don't necessarily hate having Honor Guard in the deck, but I hate not having Tithe Taker. You know, I think that we need that or a Danto Vanguard. We need some kind of two dropped for this matchup. But you can't just not have a two mana creature in this matchup. It's not really acceptable. Or we can't really expect no to win it without it. We're kind of putting all of our eggs in the Thief of Sanity basket. And, you know, we don't have Thief of Sanities. We didn't draw Thief of Sanities, so. Hoping to find a little more things to do with this Angel of Grace here. I haven't tried two of each. Just two Honor Guard and two Tithe Taker. Just split the difference. You know what? I'm not done yet.
Yeah, Tide Taker is not really bad against Dex. I'm sorry I have to do this. So that's their last one, right? This isn't a fight you can win. I think. Yeah. If exiled two with contempts. You need to take a time out. It's possible they sideboarded out Chromium, honestly. And it's possible that that's like their only way to win. Certainly possible. So they have a hostage taker. I can't take Hostage Shaker with Duress. We have a way to make our opponent draw like seven cards. I can no longer stand by and watch. Hurry. Um I don't know if we can somehow get rid of this to fairy. I don't know exactly how, but if we can somehow. You know, they're at five cards in library. Negate can do it. If we can get rid oh we have to we have to get like one more counter spell if we have two counters if we have a counter for like the Teferi like they replay Teferi we counter it and counter their syncopate like are they out of other counters no time for a break like if we counter it to fairy we maybe do this so we need to draw like more discard or counter magic. Okay, well that's that's a problem. They still had chromium in their deck. I was hoping they they boarded it out. All right, that's that's gonna do it.
<laughs> yeah, Esper Control is like that. It's pretty boring. Um, yeah, so having Honor Guard as our only two drop certainly hurt us there in that game. This is a two drop that just doesn't matter. It's kind of weird they have that hostage taker in their deck, even though I had I played Honor Guard game one, but I guess they just assumed I was going to take out Honor Guard, or they could just kill it. Yeah, I don't want to just change the deck immediately after one match. Because that's just much too small of a sample. Like, like that's just Honor Guard's worst matchup. Like, it's it's really good against basically every other deck. That's just the one matchup where it's terrible. So just because we played the one match where it's terrible doesn't mean that I'm going to, you know, just overreact and and change stuff immediately. What are you doing, Hawkeye? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so Tight's not better no matter what. It's it's just that's that's the matchup. That's like the one matchup that I really want Tight Taker in more. That's the big one. I have Mortify for that thing. Ninety six tears, you're gonna cry. Alright, hopefully we get this land for Seraph for the Scales. I guess I probably need to cast Thought Erasure though this next turn. Because the, the value of Thought Erasure is going down dramatically each turn. Alright, good. We can Thought Erasure plus Honor Guard. That's good. So we can take like a Conclave Tribunal or something like that. Whatever other spell they have in their hand. If they have one. It's just a pride. And this game should be basically over now. We'll see. They're going to have to like, draw like some runner-runners. Like If they draw like History of Benalia, for example... Um, even Battlish Marshall here would be good. Oh, hey, Stone Debate. Sorry, I just, just saw that you're in here. Yeah, good match. Yeah, you. that was our very first ever ranked match. And Storm counts up to 69 with After Wizard gifting a sub to Stone Blade or Stone Debate for the win. Or Stone Debate beating us up. Gifted 45 subs to the channel. You're so nice, After Wizard. Thank you. This should lower to 63 soon. It still says 64.
So if I block Dauntless Bodyguard and Sky Marcher Aspirant, which are like the easy blocks, if I block the two two ones, then they easily sacrifice the Bodyguard to save the Aspirant. You know, because their Bodyguard's going to die anyway. So by making those blocks... Um... I can have... Um... Yeah, I can kind of get rid of both, like, get rid of, like, the other token also. I get, I guess I'm getting, yeah, so I'm getting two bodies off the battlefield instead of just one. Takali does not stop bodyguard. Takali th causes things, oh, wait. Is that... No, so that's not an ET... So that's a weird thing, because that's not an ETB trigger. Because it's just as it enters, it, it ch you choose a creature. So that's weird. It doesn't actually... Honor Guard doesn't actually stop that, which is which is weird. you think it would, but it's not like a, something that... It's not like when, the, when this enters the battlefield. I don't... That's a weird thing to... Because, yeah, that, that's not like... It, an enter the battlefield ability, even though it looks like it's an enter the battlefield ability, because it says enters the battlefield. Yeah, so it's not when, it's as. Yeah, it sure sounds like an enter the battlefield ability. <laughs> but yeah, the bodyguard was not stopped. I guess that's the moral of the story. All right, cry, wrath. Um... Negate, dive down, out. Um, I don't really want anything else. I guess I'm going to just have a negate in the deck. I don't really want this Immortal Sun either. I mean, do I want to just play Thief of Sanities? If I don't want, like, these other cards? I guess Thief of Sanity could just block something. Hmm. Could just play a dive down to protect Lyra from like a Conclave Tribunal or whatever. I'll put one dive down in there. Yeah, ruling on bodyguard states that the first ability isn't a trigger that you can respond to, so that's why it's not blocked by Takali Honor Guard. <laughs> the silly dive down. But still keeping our hand because of Kaya's Wrath. Uh, that's exactly what I want. So, hoping for no Adanto Vanguard. That's the card that can beat Kaya's Wrath. Yeah, Kaya's Wrath is just... It's the best card that I have in this matchup. Besides, like, Lyra. Lyra and Kaya's, Kaya's Wrath are the two best. And Kai's Wrath is probably even just better. Thanks, Zazaria. <laughs> it's sure looking like control, isn't it? So we're down to 10. Hopefully that's it. And then we Wrath and then we win. I would not mind if the opponent plays some more creatures here. Don Robo, someone with Fish Prime. Yeah, I, I can't beat un Unbreakable Formation. That's true. Our our opponent could have that. If they had that, they win. 
I mean, I guess I could. I could have mortified it at end step and then also played that, but... Oh, well. Thank you so much, Don Robo, getting us to number 70. Don, you're a rock star. All right, now it says 63. <laughs> Come in and see a juicy wrath. Nice. Yeah, Kai's Wrath, the extra mana is big. As we saw there, if we had to wait like another turn for Cleansing Nova, that would have really hurt us. So, uh, Kai's Wrath with that, that extra mana is, is pretty big. Um, then, um, that's what that one dive down does. Then there are times like where we'll have a couple of creatures and we get to gain a little bit of life. So, that's a little bit of upside there, too. Oh, you're welcome, Don. All right, we got our first win. Wow, we got four things? We got like four wins for one win. Oh, cancel. We just got to sub number 70. You know what that means. New pack time. All right, going down the line. We are on Rivals of Ixalan for our next pack. Pack time. Hey, Vash. Mythic Rare. That's a good Rivals of Ixalan card right there. I don't know about y'all, but that's that's one of the best cards in, in Rivals of Ixalan. It's because we're bronze, so like when you get, so we get more, more wins being bronze. Gotcha. Yeah, there are certainly times. Usually, I'd rather have the rare WoW card, um, but I actually have like kind of have the rares. I'm actually kind of getting. I, uh, Mythics are like the thing I'm a little struggling with. Well, I'm not really struggling with any of the cards now. They've made it a lot easier to get the sets now. Hey, Joanne. How do I kill 25 of my opponent's creatures in one game? It's pretty hard. You're going to have to go a uh, super long game. I would I would recommend not having any win cons in your deck. Um, can you, like, play spells that give your opponents creatures? Yeah, rares, yep, because of the dual lands. Yeah, rares were certainly my bottleneck to start for, for a long time. Absolutely. Dual lands are tough. We're a 26 land deck, and we saw 0 and 1. Hey, you're welcome, Jay Jack Jr. Yeah, 3-2 is not, not so bad. It's up on YouTube now. I don't know if you if you saw the, went to the YouTube uh, video, if you want to see like what I was saying at the uh, after, ah afterwards. Oh no, I just spilled some water. My elbow. Hawkeye cleaned it up. I'm sure hoping this is Esper midrange and not Esper control. Because this looks like a lot like our first hand against Esper control. Lyra and... Lyra and Honor Guard are not good. Against Esper Control. But they're awesome against Esper Midrange. You know, 
Boom. All right, let's get this Ragdust Menagerie deck ready to go. Speaking of YouTube. Certainly looks like control now. Attack! Okay, and that one will be ready to go here in a little bit. What's the best way to get mythic and rare cards? Um, there's really just two, two ways to get cards just kind of in general. Um, are, you know, just buying packs or, or playing limited, playing draft and sealed. Um, those are really the only, the only ways to get cards. We did last time. Yeah, I like I like trimming some dive downs. They are gonna have they are gonna have a decent amount of targeted removal spells, but they also have rats. Take one dive down out, have a second Mortify. Mortify for Search for Escanta is pretty important. Stop. No, we're playing against Esper Control. I want to Ego away to Fairy. So I'm not going to turn one duress. I'm I am going to turn two duress. I will, I want to hit search for Escanta with duress, or like that's like the earliest card that I want to hit. Um, and so I can like maybe the search for Escanta is the the top card. So basically, I get to look at eight cards if I wait a turn. Um, so I think it's I think it's okay to wait a turn. I just don't have lands. So I take Thought Erasure, and then they don't get that Surveil. Yeah, you can, you can put links in chat. Like, you're good. You're good, Mass. Did you happen to see the modern part of the finals this weekend? No, of course not, Mike. Um, yeah, I'm not, yeah. All right, um, they're just stuck on cards. Like, casting Duress allows them to cast the Negate. I, th I honestly think I wait, and if, if they don't hit a land here, they just have to go to discard. So I think I just see if they have to just go to discard and discard a card. Uh... 
Yep, you just have to go discard, get rid of that Kai's Wrath. I could probably just play the Angel of Grace. Could probably just play that, but I kind of like them just discarding over and over while I get to just keep on hitting land drops. Um, and try try to start having as many cards as they do, you know, because I'm, I'm really far behind on, on cards right now. Well, that's certainly a card that I want to play right away. All right, tap out. Okay. All right, Immortal Sun. Well, watch Grand Prix. Yeah, depends. Usually, I'm just streaming during them. That's the other thing is I I just stream during them. Let's see. How many permits do I have? I don't know if I need to pay two life or not. Four, seven, eight, nine. Nah. Sothian! Loving what you're doing. Thanks, Todd. Uh, thank you, Sothian. Three months there. But yeah, like I'll watch like the Pro Tour and stuff. Watching magic events isn't hasn't always been uh, a huge priority for me. I don't usually watch a whole lot. I usually just play. That's just kind of how I am. Alright, so I'll get the Angel of Grace in. We have double negate to protect it. Alright, so I missed the sub earlier, so we're at 72 right now. Well, Hawkeye was in the way, couldn't type. And negate this. And should be able to just carry this uh, the rest of the way. Let's see. Another contempt. Couple to fairies. Whole bunch of absorbs I don't need to worry about. Um, yeah, I know, like, so, like, Teferi doesn't do anything, like, with a Mortal Sun in play, so I probably just don't need to take it. But if Moral Sun, yeah, I probably just shouldn't have taken it. Probably should have just taken Contempt, I guess. All 
Kind of forgot about that for a second. I don't know if I'm supposed to show them Thief of Sanity. Okay. Game three, how are we gonna win? Did we we haven't seen okay, so they had hostage taker in their in their deck. So I did have hostage taker. I'm kinda of like debating if I want like this other dive down or if I want mortify. Like do I want mortify number two or dive down number two? Um Yeah, Resplendent Angel I mean we need we need threats, like we need to be able to attack our opponent. So yeah, we need we need Resplendent Angel. Um and it's just kind of a little cheaper than Lyra um, and does something unlike Takali. Like, Takali just isn't a, a real clock. Takali doesn't do anything. Yeah, we're going to win with, like, one or two creatures, yes. So, like, dive down protect. Like dive down protecting Thief of Sanity is, like, pretty important. Yeah, I'll, I'll play that over the Mortify. Because we know they're going to have their own Contempts and... Contempts and mortifies and cast downs and all that kind of stuff. All right, game three. Can we win a game three against Esper Control? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like our land drops. I really like uh, Arch of Araska, so let's see if we can draw our other spells to kind of fill this in. Hey, no, Quaint, no, it's, it was a good question. That was a good question of if I was going to win with one or two creatures. Yeah, it's a good question. Sorry if I sounded like like I made that like it was an obvious answer and <laughs> duress for duress makes the whole world go blind no escanta please please don't escanta That's a problem. Big problem. Do they have a turn three play also? Just as per control with the one, two, three curve? This game looks looks like it's in the in the bin for the opponent. Problem Ascanta is just a ridiculous card. I wonder if we should have Ascanta in our sideboard. Hmm, or maybe even our deck. What if we have that in our sideboard? Especially like here where we have you know so little creatures. Our deck's just kind of filled with. So, what do I have? I have 13 creatures in the deck, 26 lands. So, 21 spells. Oh, what a draw step. Alright, going untap land to make sure that. Oh, untap land doesn't matter. 
We can't pay for spell peers. I don't know why I was thinking I could pay for spell peers. What a draw stab. You'd prefer having blood fast? Trust me, you'll thank me later. Not so fast. No. All right, well, this didn't pan out. Hurry! Hmm. How are we dealing with this Teferi? Maybe, maybe this card right here is Archer Vraska. We, or, or not Archer Vraska, sorry, the Immortal Sun. We need this card to certainly be good because Resplendent Angel next is not going to be a good enough draw. So we, we certainly need our next card to be really good. I think our opponent has discard in their hand where they're trying to debate whether or not they want to use their discard. That's what I think. I don't know. I don't know what they're really doing here. Hey, Intellibeam. Thank you so much. We're at 73 subs on the day now. And look like it's from... From some other subs wearing off from last month, we're down to need 65 still. I like Bloodfast and Dex where... Okay, they have that card. Where most cards are gener generally useful and as can't if you need to dig for specific answers. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Go, go, Thief of Sanity. They have five cards in hand and a Chemist's Insight, and they're drawing another card with Teferi. Hold that thought. The odds of the Thief of Sanity hitting them has to be incredibly low, right? I'm <laughs> certainly not taking out two lands. Hmm. The uh, playing a 25th land or playing 25 lands, I could maybe buy 24 lands is just a non starter. You just can't, you can't play this deck with 24 lands. Just not, that's just not possible. You just, you have to hit, you have to draw four and five mana every single game, and that's just not reliable with 24 lands. No, I don't have to ferry myself. I'm playing Immortal Sun trying to shut down Teferi. Same with Spyglass. We need to move quickly. Okay, if we don't draw an Immortal Sun or something for this Teferi here, we're going to be conceding this game. They have all these cards, and they're drawing two cards a turn. I'm drawing one card a turn, and I have a lot of very bad cards. Does this count as something for Teferi? No. Alright, so our matchup against Esper Control... Feels really bad, and so I'm, I want to go back to the Tithe Takers. I don't, I'm not liking these Honor Guards, I don't think. 
go back to tithe takers. Tithe taker is an important card in that Esper control matchup. No, it's it's not a record number of subs, but also there's there's a new um, there was a change in the Twitch uh, programming of how they count uh, resubs of just counting how you get credit for all your months and not just months in a row now. And so because of that, um, basically ev every resub can got a notification or like has the ability to send the notification today. So that's why there's like 73 subs today. Because uh, everybody gets to send out like a notification saying, saying that. No, I I don't want honor guard in the sideboard. I don't think I don't think that we have the available slots for it in the sideboard. And I I think we can beat Sultai without it. I don't think it's necessary. Hey, it's okay, Zelfast. All good. You're fine. Yeah, good match. Um, I had a, I had one day at the beginning of last year where I had right around 125 or so. I think maybe a little less, like between 120 and 125. I guess I guess that was that was around Christmas two years ago. So today, like out of the seventy if you don't count like all of like those resub messages and everything, we've probably had around fifteen, twenty subscribers today. Yeah, I've been I've been happy with Tithe Taker. I, I like Tithe Taker. Um, gotcha. Yeah, the second game was it as Kanta? I think it was, or it was um, it wasn't as Kanta. It was you had the Thought Erasure that your Thought Erasure could take a card, set it up for some more lands. Which makes sense. Makes sense. I streamed Magic Online before Arena. I played Modern uh, for the most part. Modern the most popular format. Alright, and we're playing Esper for a third time. Three out of four matches. Hopefully the Tithe Takers uh, make a little bit of difference. Dang, there goes the Immortal Sun. There goes our best card. Well, Thought Erasure was a really good draw step for us. Okay, so we have... So can can two angels beat an Azkanta? Our actions determine the course of history. Well chosen. Well, certainly attacking Karn now. We don't want them to be able to get that Kaya's Wrath. I, 
I could have kept that land on top and ensured having Resplendent Angel activation this turn. I, you know, obviously didn't think that was worth it and, you know, put it into the graveyard. So we can find other lands. I'm not playing around Settle. Especially how they cannot activate and find Settle. I like that our opponent's activating right now, though, where we have the decision of if they find something like Teferi with Ascanta that they're planning on just keeping in their hands, then, um, then we'd be able to Thought Erasure it away. Yeah, I don't know, Mike. It's, it's lots of Esper here. But that's okay. It's a good good matchup for us to practice because it's not it's not a good matchup for us. So it's a good good one to have some practice against. Hmm. It's weird. Oh, they don't have double black. That's right, that's why. Yeah, auto tapper got our opponent. Okay, should I activate Resplendent Angel? I think so. We'll see what our opponent's doing, though. All right, and they are manually tapping, making sure that that doesn't happen again. I like it. So it looks like they have a removal spell. We haven't been doing as well with this version as the one from a couple days ago, but we've also only been playing against a, a really bad matchup for us. And it's not really bad, but we've only been playing against a bad matchup and um, you know, changed out one key card that really hurt us, so went back to it. Hey, what's up, Angel? Thanks for keeping that sub going. Life to only just a couple of cards. The biggest difference was taking out Tithe Taker for Takali Honor Guard was the biggest difference. Are you the only certain? other difference is I put um, two cards that let him survive. I think we're gonna lose this. Um, the other difference was like having the Immortal Sun in the main deck. Yeah, I think I, I guess I probably should have held the Resplendent Angel. I mean, we did like, I don't know, we got, so we knew that they had the Karn. Uh, in the hand, and we knew they had Akaya's Wrath there. The problem is if I just don't play Resplendent Angel, though, I think they can just kind of find cards with Ascanta. I was kind of incentivizing them to... to do that, and I feel like they could just, like, find another removal spell with Ascanta, and... Ascanta's just messed up. No, I I played Takali over Tithe Taker the other three matches, and 
we're just getting paired against. Um, all right, well, put a stop on my end step. I want to stop. All right, well, I can't cast the Angel of Grace. We're just playing against uh, Asper Control um, over and over, so the Takali was, was pretty bad. I should probably have another spyglass in the sideboard, honestly. I think that's that's something that I could just really use. Is just another spyglass. Cause Ascanta is so good. Hey loving life. It's kind of the problem with Mortify here. I want to Ego Teferi and get Teferi out of there, but Ascanta can also... Like, there's two cards that beat you. It's Ascanta and Teferi. We saw our opponent playing Karn, though. Multiple Karns. And I could take it out. And go this. The problem, like, Mortify is awesome against Ascanta, but, you know, later on in the game, you can only get that Mortify for, like, a turn. No, you have to name, you can't name Search for Ascanta. You have to name Ascanta the Sunken Ruin with uh, Spyglass. Yeah, Search for Scanta does not have any activated abilities, so naming Search for Scanta doesn't doesn't do anything for you. Um Yeah, I was Yeah, a Mortify So I had a couple Mortifies in before, which I, I don't dislike the Mortify. Alright, I like how we have Negate on turn 2 for a potential Search for Ascanta. Alright, that's a good card. I, you know, I want to keep my negate available and not just play this the spyglass into it. Okay, so they just have some removal and an absorb. I'm just going to go ahead and name Ascanta the Sunken Ruin with me having this Immortal Sun to shut down Planeswalker. And we'll start trading spells one for one. I play a Resplendent Angel, they cast down it. Next turn I play a Seraph, they cast down it. Hey Boondocks.
of your heart. So the Immortal Sun will stop the Teferi, and I want I want the Immortal Sun to resolve. They they do have the ability to play Teferi and tick up, and so they have they have the ability to see two cards before our next draw. Like they have the ability to see two cards. So hopefully, if neither of these two cards are a counter spell, then I really like where we're at. We just gotta hope that. Um, neither one of these two cards is a counter spell. I have the. I'm gonna keep the contempt just in case, for backup. All right. Well, we know that one's not. They played that drowned catacomb instead of the land we knew about in their hand. So we just gotta hope this card's not counter spell. Keep up the pace. I know my responsibility. Don't do it. All right. I'm getting too old. Oh my gosh. Long day. You know what? I'm not done yet. That they did invoke the divine. Oh, that is what they they certainly invoked that. I went too fancy with spyglass. I named Escanta. I went. That's too relying on the too reliant. On that Immortal Sun, I could have taken Teferi with a Thought Erasure, could have named it with Spyglass. Just could have done all this stuff, but no, they just get Teferi. Well, our Esper Control matchup sure looks like it sucks. I don't think I've been playing the games very well, though. To be honest, I think I'm playing these pretty bad. What do you think of holding Spyglass until a target appears? That's probably a lot better than just throwing it out there for no reason. The The one thing about Spyglass, though, you know, if, if it's like a Pithing Needle effect, I like I like holding it. But the thing about Spyglass is, is knowing the opponent's hand is uh, pretty valuable in that kind of matchup, though, as well. So that's that's the other thing that Spyglass gets to do is seeing their hand and saying how to play um, has value. Hey, Mr. Hat, good games. I was way too reliant on my immortal son. Should have used any of the like, should use the discard or the spyglass or something else to, for Teferi. All right, we'll see if we can play as per control yet again. Or do we get a different deck? All right, we got a new deck. Well, yeah, Holy Avatar, I mean, I'm not playing very well and I'm losing a bunch, so I'm disappointed for how I'm playing. If Hawkeye was a magic card, what abilities would he have? Uh, Hawkeye, what would you have? 
He's like sitting stand sitting here right off right off screen. What would you have, Hawkeye? He definitely has something with eating. He loves to eat food. It's all he wants to do is eat. So it'll be nice. Yeah, Jenner Stray is basically Hawkeye. Yeah, Hawkeye was a, a stray cat. I, uh, you know, fa found Hawkeye in Iowa. That's how he. That's another reason why he has the name Hawkeye. Am I crazy to think Krasis is so good that with the proper combination of check lands and shock lands that it could fit into an otherwise mono red deck? Uh, I mean, you can you can certainly cast it in a mono red deck. Like it's it's certainly castable. Um, whether or not another an otherwise mono red deck would would want to play it, that's that's a different that's a different story. But it's it's certainly castable. You you need a mono red deck that wants to play late, you know, so you'd want like a mono red mid-range control deck, something that like wants to have a card advantage threat late. Oh, we used to have a dog named Hawkeye because he was born in Iowa. Nice, there you go. Um... Our opponent's stuck on four lands. Yeah, I just make the trade. I did switch out the Tithe Takers for Honor Guards initially. Um, but then we played against... We've been playing against nothing but Esper Control, and the Esper Control matchup's just too bad with Honor Guards. Like, I just don't think you can play him in the deck. The honor guards are just just dead cards. Um, and where Tithe Taker isn't, you know, it's it's not as good in a lot in a lot of other matchups, but you can still win those matchups. But with Tithe Taker, so so that game went really well for us. But I don't necessarily think this matchup overall will go really well for us. I think the cards lined up pretty well for us. Like with, uh, not pretty well, but just perfectly. Cards just kind of lined up perfectly with us having negate for the Hadana's Climb right away on turn two. And everything. Things lined up really, really nice for us. The other Kai's Wrath is certainly coming in, and... I guess I'm, I'm playing Cry of the Carnarium, but this is kind of the problem with Cry of the Carnarium, is it may not kill a lot of things that they have. I don't want the Dengates or Dive Downs. Or if I just don't play Cry, I wonder if I just play Thief of Sanities. I think I should have Spyglass. I don't think I need Spyglass. I guess Vivian... They could certainly be a Vivian deck, actually. I guess Vivian is going to be a, a big problem. Alright, I'm going to have the Spyglass for Vivian.
All right, let's see what we got here. I'm pretty sure I put it down to 60. Oh yeah, we saw them have a bunch of hostage takers. Kind of forgot about that card. Yeah, they played a couple of those. I kind of forgot about that one. They did not want Hydroid Crisis, huh? So this probably demands the hostage taker right away, which is, this is when, like, we want them to cast the hostage taker as early as possible, because later on in the game, they get to hostage taker plus cast the, the thing, like, immediately, whenever they have enough mana. So we want to get hostage taker out of their hand. So them having, like, a cast down here is, is really bad for us. <laughs> that is not what we want to see. We want them to play that hostage taker right away. Just have, like, this, I got a little bit of cat hair, like, right on my nose. From, from Hawkeye here. Um, okay, so it is 61. Okay. 49, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5... 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Oh wait, no, I'm, I'm counting 60. This is tough. If I don't make this block, I can like play Lyra and like have like this life linker and like and everything, but then Hadana's climb is gonna flip. So like if I don't make this this block, I have to kill the Hadana's climb this next turn. But then I'm taking four and I'm attacking back for three, taking four again. I think I'm just gonna make the block. And now it makes it a lot harder for Hadana's climb to flip this next turn and I could just play Dawnbringer and get that in play and get that going and then next turn I can kill this climb So I have, a, I have a stop on their main phase here. To see what they were going to do there to see like, it, to lose you know, I was planning on mortifying that and killing that, killing that thing with mortify, but I was going to be able to see what they were going to do. Vivian, of course, was really bad news for us. One card gets rid of our Lyra and our Contempt.
What was their plan? Incubation druid. Crasis, Crasis, Hostage Taker. That would have been great against the Vivian earlier, Spyglass. A little light here. Then playing Hostage Taker though is kind of a reason not to play not to have Spyglass in my deck. Y'all think I should have played Seraph there? Do you think they play Hostage Taker if we just go Seraph? And couldn't they couldn't they just Hostage Taker and take take my Seraph and cast it? Because ignore the land drop that they just got off Jade Light. One, two, three, four for Hostage Taker. Yeah, they could have just drawn. They can just immediately cast the Seraph. Yeah, so playing Seraph means they just take it and immediately cast it, and they just have it on their side, and they get tokens from the Kaya's Wrath. Now, Climb's gonna flip. And I think that's just game over. Hmm. We'll see if they activate Climb. Alright, we need removal. No, I don't think we won this either. I gotta reside board a little bit. Do I even have any more removal spells to bring in? I don't know. Cry of the Curtainarium. Not being Ritual of Soot is kind of rough. Could really prefer Ritual of Soot. Yeah, gotta have dive downs for Hostage Taker and Vivian. Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, that card against like all these Hostage Takers, Vivian's crazy. Yeah, oh yeah, Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, that card's awesome. I think I like the Thief of Sandy plan. Maybe. We cut Tithe. We could certainly just get run over by the little explore creatures. We are on the play. Yeah, Tithe like trades and gets us a 1 1. And it's like, it's kind of more difficult without that 1 1. I kind of think I just want to trim Resplendent Angel. I don't think that, that the life gain or the tokens really matter too much. Do we want an Ego Crasis? I think... I don't like Ego Crasis in this matchup because this deck is a lot more aggressive than regular Sultai. Uh, with them with them playing Hadana's Climb and Growth Chamber Guardian and stuff like that. So I don't want to take the, the time off to, to have Ego in this matchup. All 
Alright, hopefully we draw a Thief of Sanity. That'd be a good draw. Our deck just doesn't have any bad cards in it. I can't beat any of these cards. So, Growth Chamber gets... No, I, I do like Lyra a lot in this matchup because they're more aggressive. I like Lyra coming down and making Seraph like a lifelink and stuff like that. Um, Growth Chamber, Vivian, and Climb are the problems. I can only take two of the three. They got to take Climb and Vivian. Maybe I take Jade Light and they don't draw lands. Oh, I could have played Watery Grave there. Maybe they don't draw lands. Okay, that's a good card. I don't think they drew lands. Dun dun dun. Ooh, taking the jade lights, coming through clutch for us. No cast down. No cast down. Braces for one? You don't even get to draw any cards, though. They are just throwing the Krasis out as a jump blocker. They must have Hostage Taker in hand. They're willing to do that. Hmm. Found the lands with the Jade Light. All right, so they can have Vivian next turn, but we got the di the disdainful stroke for the Vivian. All right, I got one creature to find back right now. They have their own. Negate and Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, Thieves of Sandy is a great card.
I could be activating the Seraph of the Scales and give it Vigilance. Um, but I don't know if I needed all the mana or not, and it looks like we did need all the mana. Feels pretty nice taking our opponent's Krasis. Yeah, who's the Krasis deck now? Maybe we should be playing Sultai with just, like, four Krasis, four Thief of Sanity, and, like, some dive downs for Thief. And, you know, Thought Erasure, Thought Erasure, Thief, Krasis, Dive Down, Vivian. If you were to cast Unmoored Ego against a Nexus deck, do you name the Wincon or Nexus or Reclamation? I would not name Reclamation. I would name either the Wincon or Nexus. It so it kind of depends on like what what the uh, game state is. If if you know they only have one win condition, definitely take that because if they don't have a win condition, they can't win. Kind of thing. Um, but also, yeah. So either, yeah, one of those. Yeah, who needs honor guard? Yeah, I, I don't think we need Honor Guard too much there. We just can't... Um, I don't think we need too much of this deck. I don't think we could... I don't think we can play Honor Guard it, with this build and, and expect to beat Esper Control, though. Ban Angels with Krasis. Yeah. That could be a thing. What are your thoughts on blue-white control right now? I, I don't think that there's much reason to play just blue-white and not play Esper. I think that having access to Thought Erasure, Mortify, and Kaya's Wrath is is absolutely worth it. So I don't I don't think you'd want to play just blue-white. Yeah, but I would normally name Teferi or Explosion um, instead of Nexus, but kind of depends on the the game state. We're on the draw. We have a 26 land deck. I'm still just going to ship it. This hand's a lot worse. But I think it may be better than a five card hand. Um, I haven't played any Fall of Thran or Scapeshift deck since Ravnica Allegiance. I've played both of those uh, before last format. Thorn Lieutenant. I'm likely going to be mortifying this land war elf to just, you know, blow up a land. There could certainly be there something there with uh, escape shifting gates. Yeah, not necessarily a good something. The the problem is you you may just run out of gates, kind of thing. I'll just I'll just keep the mortify. I don't use it on the land war elf. I don't, I don't think that they're gonna just like play a Vivian next turn. But who knows? You, yeah, you'd certainly need some way to get like all your gates back into play. Uh, 
All right, well, I am uh, going to go ahead and get rid of that land war off now that we know that they have an Izoni that costs six mana. All right, Lyra Dawnbringer, I'd like for you to show up, please. Could certainly use a Lyra Dawnbringer right about now. Some more lands works too. <laughs> right? There should be a Thunderherd migration for angels. Alright, so Izoni can make a bunch of 1-1s, but we drew a Kaya's Wrath. So we're kind of just fine there. Another Izoni? All right, we're going to two. Oh, right, we have Angel of Grace ability that we can go to 10. Right. Every single time I play a game, I play the exact hard counter to my deck. I switch decks and then I play the exact hard counter to that deck. Oh, man. That's a rough day, man. That's a rough day. Yeah, so maybe you just gotta stay on the same deck for a while. Dawnbringer. Uh, remember when we d just didn't have any lands in our opening hand and I had to scry this Immortal Sun to the bottom? That Immortal Sun would be looking so good right about now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even Archer Roscoe, if we want to draw a land. Uh, it would be our 10th land now, so. Alright, back to 10. Am I supposed to just, like, mortify one of these things? I guess I need to. Ugh. Make it a five-turn clock. Oh, Resplendent Angel would be the best, actually. Resplendent Angel is, like, the, the best card to, to draw. Alright. Kill the, kill the things. Wasted that. Mortify. Oh, no! That card's really good. Uh, I wonder how many... If they have four Growth Chamber Guardians, this is not good for us. They just had the... Oh, they don't have any more Growth Chamber Guardians. That's the only one. Oh, we're so lucky. Could, they could have had Ancestral Recall there. With four fours. Oh no, that gets Izoni back. All right, uh, hand hand disruption. Uh, I 
thing. All right, so we we need Lyra. Uh, basically, we need Lyra or Splendid Angel, but they can also just sacrifice their things that we block. I think this is just game. I don't have another Kaya's Wrath in my deck. We don't have enough angels. Where's our angels out? Lyra and Resplendent, where are you at? All right, Cry, Cry, Wrath. Um, Disdainful Stroke. I don't think I need to go Thief of Sanity here. I'll just keep an Immortal Sun to, for that card advantage. If we play like a longer game like that, their deck doesn't seem like it can kill us very quickly. Oh yeah, Ethereal Absolution would have been a great would be a great card to have. Hmm. All right, our hand's awesome if we draw lands. All we've been doing here all day is drawing lands. I think we can draw some lands. I'm keeping it. Resplendent, Lyra, they, these cards win the game. If we just hit land drops. Yeah, I agree, Zalfast. I think the, the variance in magic is is perfect. I've A lot of people are like, like ask like, uh, what should Magic do about the variants and, and stuff? And I, I don't think they should do anything. I think that it's why the game is so good. The I think it has the perfect amount of variants in it. Yeah, it's it's good how nonsense gets to win sometimes. It's good. Um hmm. Well. You know how we've been drawing just like all these lands, like all these other matches, all these other games? Didn't happen th this time. I don't know. All of our lands, we, we left them last game. We left them on the table. Man, if we just get a swamp here and just cry the Carnarium, can we just do that? Nope. Guess not. Guess not. Yeah, we had like... What, like 12, 13 lands? Something like that last game? Ugh. Well, unfortunately they had two elves here, so Marwyn gets to to grow out of cry range. Uh, they had two elves. Endray's Forerunners, huh? All right. Kind of want to just mortify this Marwin. Oh, that grows Puck Collector, though. That's true. Hmm. Yeah, I still like it. Puck Collector is not scary. Marwin, scary. Because Pell Collector, we get to... I mean, we can we can handle Pell Collector. Marwin is how they have... How they get to, like, Endre's Forerunners. Runners. 
Yeah, our, our opponent's playing like a, a, like they have a newer account, it looks like. So yeah, they have a lot of budget choices. Oh yeah, sure, I missed a damage. That that damage does not matter at all. Does not matter in the slightest whether that nineteen or twenty or twenty one or twenty eight. Well I'm gonna have to trade with my my resplendent angel with this pulp collector now. Glad they don't want to trade. Um, I can cry next turn and get the clan caller out of here too. Four, five, six. Okay, they they cannot cast Andre's Forerunners next turn unless they have another clan caller. They could go go clan caller, clan caller. I could just play second angel, which I th I think that's what I'm gonna do. I was just kind of just kind of counting a couple mats of like how how much Marwin can how much mana Marwin can add, like potentially next turn and everything. Second Angel is the best if, if we do get our fifth land and get to play Lyra um, and have them both be lifelink. That's like the best for us. Oh, that thing's an elf too? I guess that makes sense. They had second clan caller? Does that mean I'm dead? Okay, no. Five, six. Okay, no, that's that's still okay. Never mind. They can't kill they can't cast. Cannot cast uh Huh. I gotta just block this thing. Okay, so they still can't cast Forerunners. Okay. We're good. So playing the second angel looks like it's going to kind of cost us here. I, think I, I don't know what contempt could have really done though. I guess contempt would have got rid of one of the things and gained two life. Shockland for the loss. If we could, if we could have just played Angel of Grace here, we stay at one, we untap, we play Lyra, gain a whole lot of life. All right. Not not our not our day there in the ranked stuff. Not our day there. Anyway, E Weaver, thir seventeen months in a row. Thank you for uh, resubbing there. Um. Yeah, rough day there. All right, but we did get to seventy-five subs, so let's get another pack. Uh, we are down to Ixalan. 
going on. That's the one that we're at now. Cries mostly cry because of like a Danto Vanguard uh, being kind of tough. Like that's that's why we have that's the biggest reason why I have Cry of the Carnarium. Hey, Vraska Relic Seeker. That's a really good card. All right, sounds good, Matthew. Um, that's that's the big thing there. But yeah, we struggled pretty hard today. Uh, deck wasn't very consistent. Lots of lands. Sometimes then we had like a game like that other one. Not not very many lands. Um, I'm not sure if I really liked taking out like the other Angel of Graces for Immortal Sons in the main. I don't know. I don't know. Our deck just seemed pretty off. Yeah, you know, it was it was a a small sample of the amount of matches we played. We mostly just struggled against Esper Control. We couldn't really beat Esper Control at all. Um, didn't really have a good good match there. Um, so there we go. All right, so that was our first try in ranked. So we'll have to go back and try that again another time. But so if you're watching this later on on YouTube, of course, thanks for watching. And yeah, I think that's it for this video. So I will uh, hopefully see you for the next one.